in Facebook land, YouTube land, Periscope land, whatever land that you're in, whatever time zone you're in, I'm coming to you today with some practical instruction on prayer. You know, I've been studying prayer now for many, many, many years. I've been praying with uh, mega powerful intercessors for many years. I've pressed into the reality of prayer and seeing prayer answers for many years. Uh, maybe you have too, or maybe you're relatively new into the kingdom. Maybe you don't know much about prayer. Wherever you are in your prayer life, I want to motivate you to go deeper. And I want to give you some tools that will help you to go deeper. I just want to climb right down in between your ears and just motivate you today to pray. You know, many times we pray out of desperation. We pray when we've done everything else we know to do. But the Bible doesn't say when you've done all you can do, pray. It says when you've done all you can do, stand in Ephesians 6. But preceding the verse that says when you've done all you know to do, stand. Before that, it talks about praying with all manners of prayer. So you don't do nothing. Prayer is not the last resort. Prayer is your first line. Prayer is the way to break through. Prayer is your lifeline to God. Now we know we have an enemy called the devil who does not want you to pray. And if you do pray, he wants you to use the wrong prayer tool. He wants you to pray amiss. He wants you to pray uh, a, a prayer of consecration when you should be praying a prayer of faith. He wants you to pray a prayer of, of, uh, of uh, 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 well, there's all kinds of different prayers. He wants you to pray the wrong kind of prayer. So we're going to talk just for a few minutes about this until I have to go. James 5.16 is our foundational scripture. Listen. The NLT says, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Now, you are, if you're a Christian, if you're born again, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's you. You can claim that. You're not righteous in and of your own self, but in him you are righteous. That gives you the right to go boldly to the throne of grace, to find grace and obtain mercy to help in time of need. How many of you know when we're praying, usually it's because we have a need. Now, there's other kinds of prayer, like worship, praise, and adoration, thanksgiving, these types of prayer, uh, sometimes we pray them when we have a need, but sometimes we just pray them to bless the Lord. Amen. There's some kinds of prayer that have nothing to do with need. They just have to do with, 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 with gazing upon his beauty, with, with, with staring into his glory. Amen. So there's different kinds of prayer. Now, in my study, I know Mike Bickle, he teaches, there's there's like, I don't know if he meant this literally, because uh, sometimes he speaks that. But he said there were 20 different kinds of prayer. I found 18. I'm going to have to email him. I'm going to have to go visit IHOPKC and, and catch up with them to find out what the other two are. There, I found 18. Now, when I study, I don't go and copy what everybody else has done. I found a sermon today online. It was on Sermon Index or whatever. I was studying Baal. And I was studying root words and Greek words and Hebrew words and, and what Jesus said about Baal. And I found somebody absolutely ripped off, word for word, a message from Dutch Sheets. I'm like, are you serious? You couldn't even credit him? So that goes back to the prophetic pirates, but that's a whole nother video. Listen, James 5 and 16, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Now, if you're not seeing wonderful results... There's something wrong with your prayer life. You're either not praying hard enough, long enough, strong enough, or you're praying amiss with the wrong motives, or you're praying the wrong kind of prayer. The Berean Study Bible says, the prayer of a righteous man has great power to prevail. If you're not seeing a, a prevailing after you're praying, there's something wrong. The Holman Christian Standard Bible says, the urgent request of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. I like that. The World English Bible says the insistent prayer of a righteous person is powerfully effective. Reese Howells, the great intercessor from many, many, many decades ago, he used to speak of, uh, 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 he, used to, he used to make insistent prayers. He'd say, God, I want to know by this time tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I'm quite there yet. I did pray a prayer just recently. I was in Atlanta uh, doing my first ever regional uh, Ignite Network meeting, and, and, I, and I, I felt an unction to do something more there, to plant something, to, to birth something there. And I said, Lord, I want to know by the time I leave tomorrow if there's a grace on this or 
or not. It doesn't mean I have to have all the answers, and I did get an answer, and the answer is yes. We're going to go into Atlanta area, the Atlanta region, maybe Chambly, maybe Marietta, maybe uh, Dunwoody. I don't know where. I've got a map out. I've been praying over it. Amen. Uh, and that's uh, that's that's kind of one kind of prayer, the prayer of consecration. You know, when you don't know what the will of the Lord is, maybe you know. Listen, maybe you know broadly what the will of the Lord is. Maybe you know that you're supposed to, to move into California. Maybe the Lord has spoken to you about going into California. In my case, going into Atlanta. And I'm not moving there, uh, but moving in there with a ministry, with a setting up a headquarters. But listen, maybe God has told you to move to a certain city. Uh, you know, well, there's many places in that uh, in a certain state. Let's keep it broad. A certain state. God's speaking about California, California, California. Well, you don't know where. It, California is big. California is like Florida. It's big. That's a wide area, California. So before I would want to go to California, I would want to know what city in California, right? And so that's when you do a prayer of consecration. You know, not thy will, but your will be done. Where you just, you don't know what the perfect will of the Lord is. You don't know the exact will of the Lord. This is what Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane. We read three times he prayed, Lord, let this cup pass from me. But uh, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. That was a prayer of consecration, which is also called a prayer of dedication. And some people call it a prayer of submission because essentially you're submitting to God. You don't know what his will is, but you want to know his will. And you're ready to submit to his will. Amen. And so in that case, we're looking at a prayer of consecration. You, you, you know, or maybe who to marry. You know, maybe, maybe you know, you, you fell in love. But just because you fell in love doesn't mean that you're to marry that one amen uh, maybe it's it's about a job or any big decision you have in your life uh, you know oftentimes that is the time uh, to do a prayer of consecration amen there's that James uh, 5 and 17 I want to go on here on this foundational scripture the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man accomplishes much so here we see the concept of effectiveness and fervency now, if you're missing one of those two elements, you might not see the prayer answers you want. Some translations said urgent, some said insistent. When you're fervent, you're passionate. When you're fervent, you're fiery. When you're fervent, you're, you're going for it. And sometimes in the morning prayer calls at 6 a.m. Eastern time, you'll hear me say, uh, you'll hear me say, well, you know, you haven't prayed hard enough if you haven't worked up a sweat. Amen. And so sometimes you just, you know, when you pray and when you're giving it all you got, you'll actually break a sweat. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous, uh, makes uh, accomplishes much. The amplified, the amplified Bible, the amplified version says, makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Amen. It's dunamis power. It's that same power from which we draw the English word dynamite. So I don't know about you, but when I pray, I, it's like I want it to be where, where there's like dynamite in the enemy's camp. When I pray, I want there to be dynamite that blows up sickness and disease. When I pray, I want there to be dynamite that blows up, like whatever needs to be blown up, amen? Dunamis power, dynamite power in the name of the Lord. The effective, now here it says the effective prayer. So if, if there's prayer that's effective, then you have to look at the other side and say, well, obviously there's a prayer that's ineffective. If your prayer can be effective, it can be ineffective. If it can be more effective, it can be less effective. Amen? I think all prayers have power, and they do something. But if you, listen, think about a, a golfer. A golfer, they, they, they have all kinds of different clubs. I don't know what they all do. They got ones with big old bong things on the, I don't know what that is. They got ones with little tiny, little itsy bitsy things. I don't know what those are either. They don't have those in putt-putt, so I don't know. The only kind of golf I play is putt-putt golf, amen? So listen, they use a certain club for a certain for a certain reason. Uh, a carpenter, Jesus was a carpenter, you know, use a certain tool of, to accomplish a certain goal. You know, you're not going to use a saw to nail in a, a, a to, to pound in a nail. You're not going to use a, a, a hammer to pound in a screw. You got to use a screwdriver for a screw. So there's different kind of prayer tools to accomplish different kinds of goals. Amen. James 5, 16 and 17, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous person accomplishes much. And you might say, well, you know, well, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know if I can pray. Well, Elijah, 
Elijah, you think, well, he was a mighty prophet. He was a mighty prophet. He also fell into self-pity. He got into self-righteousness. He ran away from Jezebel. Hello. He was a, just a, a normal human being that was anointed by God. Guess what? I have good news for you. You are a normal human being anointed by God. Amen. You've got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, and he will help you pray. Amen. He'll help you pray. If you stop long enough with the da -da 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 and all the panicking, if you'll st and listen, he'll, help, he'll teach you to pray. Elijah was a man subject to natural passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the sky gave rain, and the earth brought forth its fruit. Amen. The Amplified Version. I want to read you this one more version. We're going to talk about a couple more types of prayer. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Elijah was a human being with a nature such as we have, with feelings, affections, and a constitution like ours. And he prayed earnestly for it not to rain. And no rain fell on the earth for three years and six months. And then he prayed again, and the heaven supplied rain, and the land produced its crops. So see, if Elijah can do it, you can do it. Amen? I want to motivate you. You need to pray. However much you're praying, with maybe a few exceptions, you need to pray more. I need you to pray for me. So if you're not praying for me, bless God, go to PrayForJennifer.com and sign up to be part of my prayer army. I need all the prayer I can get. I'm out here on the front line pounding devils on my morning prayer call, 6 a.m., laying my life out in intercession, prophesying to you, casting devils off of you, uh, praying, you know, I need your prayers. Pray for me. What is an effective prayer? An effective prayer well, the, the baseline is, is one of the baselines is fervency. So we talked about that. You've got to be fervent. The other baseline is persevering. You know, there's some prayers, you're, it's, it's one and done, but most prayers are not one and done. Most prayers are not one and done. Most prayers, you've got to persevere. Like the widow in Luke 18, amen? She kept on praying. Jesus said that we should always pray and not grow weary and not faint, amen? So let's talk about some of the different kinds of prayer. There are different kinds of prayer. Let me show that in the Bible. Because some of you are like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. I, I just pray. I mean, how many kind of prayers can there be? Well, here in Ephesians 6 and 18, and this is where we started out, in the context of putting on the whole armor of God, in the context of principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, and rulers of the darkness, in the context of stand and withstand in the evil day, Paul said this, pray in the spirit sometimes. No, he said, pray in the spirit always with what? All kinds of prayer and supplication. All kinds. That means there's more than one kind. Probably more than two kinds. Indeed, I said I found 18. My people says he found 20. To that end, be alert with the perseverance and supplication of all the saints. The Berean Study Bible says, pray in the spirit at all times with every kind of prayer and petition. God's Word translation says, use every kind of prayer and request there is. You know what? When I'm going through it, I'm going to use every kind of prayer. I'm going to go down the list. I'm going to pray a prayer of supplication. I'm going to pray a prayer of contemplation. I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray every prayer I can get my hands on until I see results. And that's what some of us do. And that's okay if you're desperate. You just don't know. But you know what? How much better is it to learn these kind of prayers and ask the Lord, what kind of prayer should I pray? Or to just to know by experience, to know because you've prayed so much and you've seen results by doing this that and the other I want to teach you I want to motivate you God wants to change whatever situation that is unpleasant in your life yes we have to go through trials yes we have to go through tribulation all those who who are godly will suffer persecution yes it's just part of it but we can have peace in it we can have joy in it God doesn't want you to be poor he wants you to be prosperous I'm not a prosperity preacher but I'm certainly not a poverty preacher God wants you, doesn't want you to be sick. He wants you to be healed. And you need to learn how to pray through these things. Amen? The Passion Translation says, Pray passionately in the Spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. An Amplified Version says, Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the Spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. And then in uh, 1, Timothy, um, yeah, 1 Timothy 2 and 1, Paul also said, Therefore I exhort first... Of all that you make supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving for everyone. Now there he listed one, two, three, four different kinds of prayer. Right there he listed four different kinds. And there's more than that. There's what I call entryway prayers. I made that up. I think it sounds good. What do you think? 
entryway prayers. Those are, are prayers of confession, uh, like repentance, uh, uh, praise and worship, thanksgiving, entryway prayers, prayers that, that help you enter in. Many times we just willy-nilly run into a prayer group and we've not prepared ourselves to pray. Well, that sounds ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. You're going to meet a king. You're going to petition the, the creator of the universe. Don't you think you might want to make, you know, dress clean, dress in your white garments, make sure you're, you're cleansed, amen, from all unrighteousness? Yes, you want to do those things. Prayers of confession. There's all kinds of prayers like that. There's also, um, there's also, let me go to the next category here. I call them solo prayers. These are prayers that you do uh, with your own self, usually in an intimate place with God. Uh, we talked about the prayer of consecration, dedication, and surrender. We talked about that. We talked about that. We talked about that. Okay, here's some others. I don't have time to go through these. Uh, da, 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 da. There's spirit prayers. Spirit prayers are prayers that uh, I call them spirit prayers because obviously apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. But we can choose to pray. Spirit prayers are prayers that we cannot enter into on our own. We cannot force our way, for example. Let's just pick one. Travail. You cannot decide to go into travail. You can't do it. Travail is something the Holy Spirit does in you, through you. It's him praying. You can't decide. But what you can do is you can yield to it. What you can do is you can give way to it. What you can do is you can engage with the Holy Spirit and just thrust yourself into it. Trail, travail is part of the groanings too deep to be uttered. Uh, travail is when you're, many times you're birthing something in the Spirit. Uh, many times uh, you're, you're, you're birthing through. When I was in uh, Conyers, Georgia, at the first ever Ignite Regional Meeting, uh, there, there was a travail that broke out. I, I, I sensed in my spirit it was going to break out. There was going to be a birthing of dreams, a birthing of vision, a birthing. And sure enough, travail did break out. Now, did everybody, the, 300, the all 300 people in the room, break out into travail? No. Why? Well, it could be the Holy Spirit did not move on them in that way, although we were in a corporate anointing. doesn't mean that every person is affected. It could be that some people just held back and quenched the Spirit. It could be that some people were self-conscious and didn't know what was going on. They hadn't been taught. And there could be many reasons why. But a lot of people did go into travail. And when I was on my face before the Lord, he birthed the 7,000 mandate for the Ignite Network, which is the Lord uh, said uh, to, to Elijah that there are 7,000 that have not bowed a knee to Baal or kissed him. So that was the 7,000. So, the, so, so the, that was the 7,000 made it for the Ignite Network. Now, here's the thing. You can't make that happen, but you can stop it from happening. You can quench it. That's travailing prayer. Listen, I'm out of time. i got like three minutes. I've got to do some, some phone calls for alignment uh, for the Ignite Network for ministers and, and parachurch leaders uh, and, and others who are trying to align with my ministry, uh, with my network, church leaders. And so I've got to get ready. I've got to call in just a couple of minutes. But I want to pray for you. I really want to pray for you before I go. I want for that spirit of prayer to come upon you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Uh, but first, I want to, if you want, like, you, we've been talking about Ignite a couple times here. If you want to be part of the Ignite Network, go to ignitenow.org. When you register for Ignite, Tier 2 or higher, you get a 15% discount on all of my schools. And listen, if this lit you up, and if my prayer that I'm going to pray lights you up, I want you, to, I want you to go sign up for my Mentoring and Prayer and Intercession course. It's not a school. It's, it's a mentoring program. It, the, the second call is tonight. This, these calls are going. They're ongoing. You see, you really missed anything. They're ongoing. And that is tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. If you can't make it at 7 p.m. Eastern time, you can listen to the replay. No problem. It'll be there for you. Go to schoolofthespirit.tv. Register for the prayer and mentoring intercession. Create a username and password, and then later on, when you when it's convenient for you, sign in to SchoolTheSpirit.tv up at the top where it says Course Login, and you can listen to everything that you uh, want to listen to. Listen, there's also the School of the Seers. There's the School of the Prophetic, the School of the Writers, the School of Spiritual Warfare, amen, and the Build Your Dream webinar. There's all kinds of stuff to equip you and inspire you. Tons of free resources, tons of free resources. More, well, there's like, I don't know, eight or nine free resources right there. Now, go visit SchoolTheSpirit.tv. TV. Amen. And if you're into prayer, go to awakeningblaze.com. Help me ignite prayer in the nations. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. 
I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you stir in us a hunger to pray, God. Make us thirsty to pray, God. Make us hungry to pray, God. Lord, give us the motivation we need when we feel like all hell is breaking loose against us, not to lay back and feel sorry for ourselves, but to rise up and pray in the name of Jesus. God, would you help us motivate us by your spirit, God, and with your word. Help us to press in deeper in prayer than we've ever pressed in before. Lord, help us to find the right words to pray, even if it's in the spirit. We don't know how to pray as we ought. Lord, help us, help us, help us to pray the right prayer for the right moment that we can see prayer answers. There's somebody on this broadcast that's listening to me in between, it's between seven and eight years. You've been praying, uh, you've been praying, you've been praying to have a baby, to have a child. And the Lord is saying, just keep pressing, just keep praying. I don't know who I'm talking to. Between seven and eight years, between seven and eight years, I just thank you, Lord, for that. Persist in prayer, persist in prayer, persist in prayer. Some of you, that's the word for you today. Persist, persist, persist. Don't give up. Keep on praying. Every prayer you pray releases power in the spirit. Every prayer you pray releases tremendous power. Get rightly aligned. Get educated. Get equipped. Go to schoolofthespirit.tv. I got to go. I love you guys. We'll be back with you soon. Bless you. All right, you guys.